All right, all right, all right. What's good, y'all? Soul here, and welcome back to the story mode. So, um, it's been a couple of days since I uploaded, and I apologize for that, especially because I did say that I would be uploading daily, and I, I that 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 still very much applies, you know. It's just been, you know, a very relaxing weekend, you know. It's it's been a weird little weekend here, so I've just been kicking back, doing whatever. But for those of you that don't know me, hi, hello, what's up? I love to do these podcast style discussions where we talk about just games of any kind, maybe recent news and things like that, because I just love chit chatting about games. As you know, may, some of you may have seen on my main channel, Soul Story Mode. Go check it out if you haven't already. If you like Pokemon and anything regarding Pokemon, or at least most things regarding Pokemon. So, um, today. <laughs> This is actually a very funny topic to me because of just how ironic it seems, but in reality, it, it's not that simple, right? So, you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. We're going to be talking about the, the Mario has no story and that Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto hates stories in video games, right? And this is a notion that has come up a lot, apparently, right? And that's, that's new to me. Like, I, I didn't know that people were claiming that the big head of, of the Mario series, Shigeru Miyamoto, hated stories in video games. That was just some claim that's been going around for a long time now, right? Again, I only heard about this, like, three three days ago for the first time, which I, I, I don't know how <laughs> this discussion has escaped me for so long, but it was intriguing to me, so I looked a little more into it. Um, and I meant to talk about it the other day, but again, it was just a, you know, chill kind of weekend. You know, I was, I've been playing a lot of Metroid. We're going to be talking about that real soon. <laughs> I've playing a lot of Metroid and really wanted to finish that out. Um, so anyway, um, this is a talk that's been going on for like a decade now, dating all the way back to like Super Mario Galaxy 2, apparently, right? But in this most recent article, he says specifically that he likes to make a starting story so that he can focus on gameplay to make an experience that's playable over and over again, right? That's not the direct exact quote, but that's about the gist of it. If you want the full article, I can put it in the description. Actually, I will put it in the description just so that you could see what he said and then you can look at some of those replies and see why people are so upset and stuff like that, why people are so divisive when it comes to that, right? Now, before we get too deep into this, before we read too heavily into this, I need you guys to know two things. Or, no, one thing at least, sorry. I, I always think it's going to be two things. Anyway, one thing to note is that I've only read this article and seen a tidbit of the discourse surrounding this very topic. This is not some crazy in-depth deep dive on why he's wrong or, you know, if he's right or whatever. Like, it, it's, it's not even like that. It's legit just a conversation right i have my thoughts on it and it may not even be what you think it is so you know just so we know this isn't some crazy deep dive on that but i do have my opinion on the topic from a, a generally outside perspective i i, I guess inside perspective because i play mario games too you know i play I, i've played a lot of what this man has developed throughout my life so i think it's fair to say it's an inside perspective right so either way either way so here's the thing right i can see that a lot of this this discourse this anger this like disregard for you know what he's actually saying comes from two particular examples right the first of which being pretty much any of the mainline games right think about the most recent mainline game or the last biggest mainline game which would be Super Mario Odyssey, you know, that was huge, big time for the Switch, right? Biggest release we've had for Mario in a long time. If we've had anything else for Mario recently, the only thing I could think of is like Mario Rabbids, and th th that's, that's, that's its own thing entirely. Different discussion. The mainline games. It's the same thing, right? Think about Mario Odyssey. The story was... You know, they just happen to be in this new crazy area, but Bowser has kidnapped Peach again. So, Mario finds Cappy in this strange little land here, and goes on this big, big-ass journey to go defeat Bowser and get Peach back. 
nothing out of the ordinary but you know it's nothing strange to the series in fact it's the most common story to the series to the point in which it's not considered a story anymore by people who play mario games so you know that's 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 one reason right it's a very simple story if if you want to consider it a story at all peach is kidnapped again go save peach okay whatever right now the biggest reason that this discourse is such a big thing is because of the very obvious de-evolution of the rpgs right think of any of the spin-off games in the mario series right besides like the sports games and the racing games you know mario kart there were the rpgs right and then there's a huge issue in which the rpgs have just devolved so much to the point where there's practically no story there either and you know that in of itself is kind of a problem right the last mario and luigi game which was mario and luigi uh, paper jam it was bowser kid uh, bowser kidnaps peach times two now it's paper bowser kidnapping paper peach and bowser kidnapping regular peach but now paper mario's involved so double the trouble double the help that that's the whole story i'm, I'm serious <laughs> i'm serious right <laughs> and then there is the oh so beloved paper mario series all right and um <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help laughing because it's such a ridiculous situation. And I feel like I've talked about it so many times now that it's just... It's insane. It's insane. If you go back through, like, any of my channels, you could see how much I've talked about these games. But either way... The Paper Mario games have seemingly gone down in quality, well, at least a lot when it comes to the, the consumers, you know, the player base. Because they have become a lot more focused when it comes to the gimmicks of the turn-based combat instead of utilizing what people got into the paper mario series to begin with which was their unique cast their unique stories their unique takes on mario and these new environments meeting these new very interesting characters and things like that it's been like that for the last three games in the series with sticker star very basic no interesting characters point a to point b fight bowser and win color splash very samey just now with paint buckets and paint <laughs> all over timbuktu yes you save the kingdom from bowser who's now a paint god or something i don't even remember it's been so long since i've seen anything from color splash and then there was the most recent entry in the series paper mario and the origami king now it's not bowser's fault it's this origami you know folds fault or whatever and you know he just misheard something and turned the world into hell because of it and said oops my bad that was it there's not a lot going on in terms of story they made things very very simple you know they could be very funny at times but overall they have gradually devolved in terms of story there's no more of those unique side quests or what feels like side quests to lead you back onto the main path it's just like things are happening and getting in the way of you just going from point a to point b with the last couple of games and so in turn people feel like there's just you know a, a little bit of a lack in story and if you were to play those games in comparison to the first two games even no, excuse me, even the first three games, because Super Paper Mario, even though it didn't have the most amazing gameplay ever, it had an incredible story, an awesome story with a very, very sick cast. I remember that specifically, had a great time with that. If they had gone that route, that's fine. We're not here to talk about Paper Mario, we're here to talk about the story issue. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You can't talk about Paper Mario without talking about Paper Mario. It's awful, it's so scary how impressively bad that series has gotten but despite that let's get back on topic here so those games all happened the mario rpgs all of the spin-off games all happened at one point the rpgs in the early stages had stories now they don't that's there's there's, there's no if ands or buts right 
the same with any of the spin-off games the, the mario tennis games mario strikers games nothing there's no story in those which is fine they don't need story but people see that and they automatically believe like oh so he just doesn't like story in video games that's why he doesn't do it in the mainline mario games that's why he's taken away all of it when it comes to the spin-off games i don't think it's that cut and dry think about this for a second right now personally i believe that when when miyamoto uh i'm sorry i why do i keep i've been talking for too long <laughs> so i gotta wrap this up it's still gonna take a minute to wrap this up i don't know why i said that like the video's almost over but anyway I believe when Miyamoto says that having a story isn't a bad thing. You can read the article for yourself. I believe that his words are very true. There's nothing wrong with having games that are more centered around their gameplay than the story itself. And in his case, he made that very specific and that's totally fine. Despite how I might feel this is a personal opinion, right? But despite how I may feel about any of the 3D Mario games within the last like decade or two, when it comes to Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario 64, whatever. If there's one thing that I can say personally is that those games are good. They are developed well and they're fun. Despite what anybody may say about them, people are playing those games still to this day if they can get their hands on them not for the story for the games themselves and that is totally fine and he's made it very clear that his objective is to make a fun game to return to over and over and over again he wants to make something that's stronger than a one-time experience which is kind of what story stuff usually falls into when you get into something that's very story heavy like a a book or a, a tv show or an anime you watch it one through for the story the one time it's hard to go back through that that story or that individual like piece of media because you already know what the story is me personally i like i like revisiting but at the end of the day you can only experience that series that same way one time you may find new details in a story every time you revisit it but at the end of the day nothing is changing when it comes to the gameplay itself, you can change the way you play the game every single time, which is why he wants to make something that's more focused in that aspect, make something that can last, something a little more tangible as opposed to something that's just more memorable in terms of story. Right? He wants to make he wants to make games that he could feel comfortable just thinking about and be like, "No, I want to play that again." Right? Because when I personally think about a game, I have to really consider, is this game worth going back through because I know the story already? Is the gameplay worth it? Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no. Right? And I, I all I'm saying here is that I understand his, his thought process on this. Like when they interviewed him, I get what, I, what he's saying here. The games themselves, that's where his focus is on, when people are playing the game. The story in of itself, it's just to get you into it. Like, oh, okay, how are we saving the princess this time? Well, now we got this awesome new gimmick where you're taking over an entire dinosaur soul. Cool, awesome, great. Here's the problem. Here's where, the, here's where everything lies. Like I said, the RPGs that people fell in love with so hard and devolved so far down still exist. With the existence of those games and with him as the face of the Mario series, it's so easy to turn a blade towards his throat for whatever happened for those games. Now, I can't say much, right? I don't know who is specifically to blame for whatever happened with the Mario series. All I can say is, He's saying that story is totally fine to have when all of the most recent Mario RPGs, which was known and cared for because of their stories, have been stripped away of that, completely taken away from their identity, and now we're left with what exactly? And that's where the miscommunication comes in, because he he has, there, there's, there's, 
gotta be a part of him that knows how people feel about the most recent Mario games, right? Or at least the most recent Mario RPGs, right? There's no, no way he hasn't heard about that. I'm sure he's on Twitter like the rest of us. He can, he can avoid it all he wants, but I'm sure it's gonna get back to him one way or another. The point is, those games exist, we feel a certain type of way about them, and then he says this, even though we've made how we feel about those games very vocal, and then more games like it would, would, will come out again. We didn't want another color, or people didn't want another sticker star, they got color splash. People did not want another co color splash, they got Origami King, which was, when you really look at it, carbon copy, damn near. Carbon copy. So, it's a mixed bag. It's a very, very mixed bag problematic to say the least <laughs> because on one hand the fans are going rampant very upset about what happened with the mario series and then there's miyamoto who says like no video games with stories are totally fine i just focus on the gameplay more even though people don't want that in their spin-off games like the rpg series they want more stories told utilizing mario in those stories I say that I believe Miyamoto in because of what we have from him with, you know, Zelda and Pikmin and stuff like that. There are games that are heavily based around their stories as well as good gameplay, you know? And then there's the Mario series, which is so, such a mixed bag, but at the end of the day, the Mario games have always been more focused on gameplay, and that's totally fine. But <clears throat> with the Mainline series, that's great, that's good, great and all. Taking that away and stripping the identity of the RPG series when people come to those games for those, you know, those stories, that specific gameplay, then you got people mad. And then saying that stories are okay to have when those games don't deliver, when you're the face of the product, it's kind of a hard sell and it feels like there's a very, very vast disconnect. Right? So that's where the problem lies. I believe he does believe that there should be good stories in video games and that there can be and it can be done very well. But I also believe that there's a very wide disconnect in which these games aren't getting the stories that they deserve and they aren't getting an explanation as to why they're just getting it shoved down their throats that he supposedly believes that... That was an aggressive way to say that. Hold on. They just read... Stories are okay, and then they don't get stories in the games that they want stories in. So, there's no balance there. <laughs> I don't think that people should be going after him for that. I, honestly, I really, really don't. I feel like there's better ways to go about this, and hopefully he understands going forward with Paper Mario, if there's another Paper Mario, or the Mario & Luigi series, if there is a Mario & Luigi series, that when it comes to directing those, Hey, RPGs kind of need stories, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I damn near fell off of Paper Jam. The only reason I didn't was because I paid money for it. So, I wanted to finish it. <laughs> so, but either, and then, you know, same with Origami King. I wanted to put Origami King down so bad. I, that is one of my least favorite games ever, but I paid full price for that game. Day of, because I felt that there could have been something good there, but there wasn't. But again, beside the point, Miyamoto does know storytelling and he can tell a good story. There's just aspects in which he doesn't want to do it. And when it comes to the Mario series, I get why. But when it comes to the spinoff games, I feel like that's not really a necessary sacrifice if he is the one that is leading the charge on that. But if not, then what now? So... That's my take on it. That's how I feel about it. That overall, I'm sure he's he's got his reasons, but at the end of the day, those games are what they are. Just, oh, it's such a mixed bag. <laughs> it's such a mixed bag. But we've gone on long enough, so I think it's about time you go ahead and tell me what you guys are thinking. Do you believe that Miyamoto actually does care about stories and video games? Do you think that it's just been overblown and blown out of proportion that he hates stories in video games? Or do you believe that the fans are right that he's lying through his teeth? He absolutely does not like stories in video games and that will continue to get absolutely no story for from now on, even though we're getting an entire movie in two months from now. Hard to argue, but 
Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section below because you know for a fact that I'm always going to be down there with you guys. But it's been long enough, so it's damn near about time for me to skedaddle. I would like to thank you guys ever so much for watching. I truly do hope you enjoyed. Do me the greatest favor of dropping a like and a comment and consider subscribing for more content just like this here. And with that, I'm bouncing. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Do me the greatest favor for taking good ass care and I'll see you all next time. Bye.